So some different attitudes that shape our understandings of the environment and in some ways have resulted in our over-exploitation of the environment. The first is dualism. My own research, I decry dualism day and night. Dualism is an idea that you could say comes from Aristotle and some of these philosophers, but was more really became more mainstream in Western thought with Newton and Descartes. Some of you may be familiar with uh, Descartes' statement, I, I think, therefore I am. What these guys actually established was that people and the natural environment were in some way separated. And so dualism as it relates to the environment basically says, well, I'm just a person and the things that I do on the environment don't necessarily impact it and therefore, obviously, the environment may be getting degraded, but it couldn't be caused by me. That is, the natural environment is something separate from me. Um, some of you may be thinking, well, that's a ridiculous way of thinking. Uh, and in my opinion, it very much is. But dualism pervades many, many domains of Western thought, not just uh, pertaining to the environment. Think of in binary code on computers. You know, we think about zeros and ones, we think about yes and no, we speak in terms of black and white. Um, these are all examples of dualism as it has pertained to Western thought. And again, that idea that people are somehow separate from their environment and not necessarily having any sort of a major long-term impact on it greatly has been to the disservice of the environment. The second is progress. You think about primitive man wandering around the desert or the steppes and they had to worry about being attacked by lions and bears and snakes and all this kind of stuff. And as we start shifting you know, to farming and agriculture and cities, we in some way conquered the environment. We made the environment work for us and that was seen as a good thing. I remember reading um, a story about the Romans when they invaded uh, Germania and they were terrified of Germania because there were forests. You know, most of the forests in Italy during the late Roman Empire had already been destroyed because they had conquered nature and made it work for them. So Germania was something terrifying and needed to be tamed because it was the natural environment. So that's progress. The idea that we can conquer nature and make it work for us. Capitalism. Fortunately, our friends and our capitalists or neoclassical economists if something does not have a cost, it is therefore considered worthless. So you think about something like clean air. Well, nobody really pays for clean air. So therefore, clean air is something that is worthless, and therefore it's okay for us to exploit it and or destroy it because it doesn't have a value anyhow. Water is something that is very cheap, and therefore it has a very low value, even though air and water are both essentials uh, to maintaining human life. And so under capitalist thought, the environment does not have a value, and therefore it is worthless. And then utility. Under the ideas of utility, well, I can cut down a tree and burn it for fuel and warm hundreds of people, or I could let that tree live. Well, it's the greatest amount of pleasure for the least amount of pain. Nobody cares about a tree that I cut down, but hundreds of people care about being cold. Nobody cares about uh, the air being destroyed just a little bit if it means that more people can get some sort of textiles or material possession. So what we're going to do now in the next uh, video is we are going to, actually let me add one more uh, thought to this video before we start shifting gears and discussing environmental regulation in the United States. There are a couple other ideas that challenge these that I just mentioned. And we have, hopefully you can see me. So you've got Aldo Leopold. And he had this idea that people should challenge or rethink the traditional ideas of the man-nature relationship. That maybe we had, um, some sort of a responsibility towards nature. Think about the countervailing forces model, right? Looking at um, nature as not only a stakeholder, 
but possibly equal or more important to the interests of mankind. And I would add, but I would add a similar concept from Ness, Arne Ness, And that's the idea of deep ecology. And deep ecology, again, uh, building on the ideas of Leopold, would say that you know, if you don't take care of nature, it will take care of you, and it's going to be in a way that you don't like it. If you destroy the environment, the environment will give out, and of course, we in some way will suffer as a society and species. And Arne and Ness's ideas inspired a lot of anti-corporate government groups. Then we also have the ideas of Peter Singer. Let me coin this term. And his coin term was speciesism. Let's see. Speciesism. if you could see me down there on the bottom. So that's speciesism. If you can't remember what speciesism is, think of it like racism. Racism is the preference of one race over another. And Peter Singer kind of coined this term of speciesism, where in some ways we favor the human race over other species and the environment. So for example, it's generally illegal to murder, but I guess we can kill animals because they were raised for us. That's a form of discrimination against cattle in a way. Right? The standards are being held as different. And that's an example of speciesism in action. So in our next video, we're going to talk about environmental regulation in the United States. I'll see you then.